Welcome to your VR devlog number seven. My name is Ryan and I'm here to take you through the updates over the last week, starting with our starter house. Looking around, you'll notice that the guest bedroom has been moved upstairs and a main bed downstairs. We've got a great fire burning in the hearth as well as a uh, table full of tools. But uh, one of the most exciting things that I can show you right now is our fancy menu system. Just attaches to the back of the hand like that. Open up with the menu button and we've got all the menus that you'd expect in a video game starting with graphics. Might be a bit blurry right now, but we can clean that up by changing the quality settings from lowest all the way up to ultra. So that's going to up our screen percentage, add some lighting effects, some additional shadows, and uh, and whatnot and if we go back out we've got a sound menu crank up the sound effects and the music when we get some as well as our sick no more menu system so this is for motion sickness reduction and uh, the first uh, tool in that is fov reduction so when you're walking around a lot in the game world uh, you will see that your field of view will start getting less and less and less not really noticeable in the headset but noticeable on the screen for sure as well as lowering the walk speed both of these things are great for new players to VR that are not used to the movement in VR uh, veterans might not find it all that interesting to turn on uh, reset to defaults and then resuming into the game so cool another cool feature that we've added in is we can interact with doors so just pushing those open getting out into the real world and taking a look at our first custom designed and custom built structure. This is our uh, smelter. It's a, a hybrid combination between a blast furnace and a bloomery, obviously a lot larger than what a bloomery would be, but also a lot smaller than what a blast furnace would be. We felt with the mechanics that we're implementing, this would be an ideal mix. You can see in there we've got a little bit of a fire going on, not hot enough to smelt just yet, but that's good because the system is not set up. So let's just take a quick look around and see it from a from a different angle. It's it's a great, great structure. We're really proud of, uh, of how it turned out. Uh, now for the rest of the town, everything else is pretty much as it was before. Not a lot of new stuff added, but we want to dive into uh, resource gathering and movement. So we can see a little few updates with the movement system. Uh, we've got our teleportation with walking long distances and we also have a d-pad movement system in now. So you press the uh, the face 2 button and on the other hand it turns on the d-pad so that lets you move around. You see the FOV reduction kicking in. But we've got uh, two tools here for gathering resources as well as our handy cart. Our pickaxe and our hatchet. So uh, obviously for trees and for uh, rocks, these are the starter tools and we'll eventually let you upgrade them over time, but they'll do the trick for now. So let's, let's go and uh, take a look at our mining cart here and toss them in. You'll notice that when both hands have tools, the uh, teleportation is no longer controlled by pointing your hand. You actually just move your head around and that lets you keep a, keep a weapon aimed on a target if you wanted to without losing it. and. Uh, and, uh, and move freely. So let's dump the weapons in the cart here and grab the handle and off we go to the races. Uh, take it over by this uh, rock here and grab the grab the pickaxe. I think that should be good. Yeah, a little bit further. There you go. Come here. Come here. There we go. So we'll grab our pickaxe. Oh, it's kind of buried there. So let's get these logs out of the way. Now you'll see when I grab it, I was able to pick it up by the head and or by the blade I guess. That's our hybrid grip system in place. When we have a tool that's meant to be held in a very specific way, we'll have grip points on the blade or on the handle, but if you grab it anywhere else like on the blade, it'll kind of just super glue it to your hand. So now if you see when I grab it at the snap point, it snaps the tool into a specific rotation and then just makes it easier to get straight to work without having to fiddle with it um, you know, in a more kind of a free grip system. And with, with some tools, they'll allow for uh, two hands to be gripped on them. So let's uh, just show you that you can just pick it up again by the, by the head. Super glues, it makes it easy to throw things. You can see when I want to like grab things quickly and throw them around, it's really easy. But when it comes to using tools, it's, it's pretty hard to beat the grip system. So that's why that's in place. So let's uh, take this to the old rock here and give it a couple hits. Uh, you, it's a two-handed tool, but you can use it with one hand if you want. And you'll notice as I'm hitting it, the coal nodes are kind of falling out and uh, uh, and gathering at my feet, which I can then put into the cart. 
But because this is a two-handed tool, what I can do is I can take my other hand and I can just grab the tool as such. And this gives me a 30 or 40% bonus to damage as well as the yield that I'll get out of the rock. And what I find really useful here is I take the lower end of the, the top controller and I just stick it in the ring of the bottom controller and it kind of ties it all together. When I'm swinging this, it feels like one solid controller instead of two. So as I, as I swing this around, you'll notice that uh, I'm getting resources a little bit faster and just meant to kind of encourage a more realistic grip on our tools. So we got our ore, don't need that anymore. So let's pick that up and throw that in our cart. Might come in handy later. And let's go grab the cart and uh, go find a tree to chop down. And as you can see in the distance, we've got some got some friends in the in the meadow here. So maybe we'll go and that looks like a good tree over there. We'll drop our cart off and say hello to to our friendly deer. It's one of the coolest things I think I've experienced in VR yet is just getting up close and personal with these guys. It's hard to really convey that on the screen, but once you're uh, once you're right in front of them in VR and you get a sense of the scale, it's I don't know, it's a it's pretty cool. You got to get in there and and see it for yourself. But uh, anyways, you feel like you can just kind of reach out and 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 pet them. But you know, anyways, anyways, I digress. Let's get back to chopping down some trees. We'll see you later, buddy. So we've got our uh, our cart and our handy little hatchet. Let's grab that. There we go. And uh, we see there, you can do the same thing with this or go back. Sometimes it's a little finicky. We're just still working on the details. Sometimes you got to drop it just to pick it up, but probably have that fixed next week. And uh, let's go to work on this tree. You'll notice that when I hit the tree, it got really bright. And that's because of the way that we're handling our, our shadows and our light maps in, in the map. We, we have to have static shadows and static lighting for now for performance reasons and unfortunately the trees as they're getting hit they they uh, they, they have to change from a foliage actor to a, a static mesh and you'll you'll notice there uh, the like the ring of the tree around the base of the tree it doesn't it doesn't blend that well into the ground and that's just because of the difference with how the lighting is handled on static meshes versus foliage actors so tap 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 away we see we got a, a fair amount of wood on this tree here and uh, we can go and probably keep on doing this for a while but uh, don't need to bore you with me chopping down trees so let's load up our cart with a little bit more wood and uh, take it back into the village and I'll show you how we how we store this stuff. Now the carts can be a bit finicky as we're dragging them around it's, it's definitely getting them to work with real physics but preventing them from kind of like exploding and flying up into the sky has been a bit of a challenge. Oh, looks like I lost myself some wood. Go grab a piece just to demonstrate this and actually I think I have a bunch waiting for me at the box. Yep, never mind. So what we've done is we've created what we're calling infinity boxes and as you go out and gather wood in the world you end up with these big piles of wood all over the place and we're having the wood destruct after about 20 minutes or so just to clean up the world and we want a way for you to store wood uh, and so when you log back in, you can come and retrieve it later, or you can have just hundreds and hundreds of logs in one place uh, without a, a, a pile that's you know going up into the sky. So this way, it lets you kind of gather your wood, throw it in a box, and then uh, store it for later. And you can come back and retrieve it anytime you want. And right now, I only have about nine pieces in there, but I could have 900 pieces, and it wouldn't really take up any more space than than what you see here. So uh, you know, ideally what you do is you bring your cart around and you grab your wood and load up your cart and then just kind of bring it to wherever you want to use it, whatever building you might want to build with it or whatever fire you might want to make. And we're looking at other ways to quickly load up these carts because one at a time, a cart like this would probably take a little bit to, to get fully loaded. So we're looking at other ways. Um, and just like our wood piles where we have kind of the equivalent infinity boxes for ore, I've got a piece of coal in my hand here and you'll see if I just throw it over there, it kind of locks into place and the counter goes up and oh, I got a piece of iron here and I can do the same thing with the iron. So the place where you're going to be using this most is going to be your smelter. So we want to keep these infinity piles close at hand to where they're going to be used uh, most often. So like right now we're at our smelter so I could quickly just grab the iron if I wanted to. It, Okay, hey, come here, come here, there we go. And just chuck it on into the, the smelter and, and, and start the process. So anyways, 
that's really resource gathering in a nutshell. It's kind of what I wanted to go over with you guys. Uh, chop down any tree I want, all the trees I can chop down, all, all the rocks I can mine. Um, it's all it's all in place and all working. And actually, let me find my hatchet here. Let me just go and walk up to any tree I want, and you can see as, as soon as I tap it, it goes bright to indicate it's been hit. And we'll probably make that a little bit better later on, but any tree I want, I can go and extract. And once uh, once their health runs out, then um, they just turn into a stump, and eventually the stump just respawns into a tree a tree later. But sometimes the base of these trees are so big that it gets a little hard to get close enough to them. But yeah, it all uh, it all works. Uh, now in the in the next uh, next episode, I'll probably just show you what we're going to be doing with our wood. But uh, but that's it. We have resource gathering is in place, so. Any questions, of course, leave them, uh, leave them in the comments section below or head over to facebook.com slash yourvr. Uh, you can also go to www.playyour.com if you have any, uh, any questions or if, you're, or if you want to learn more about the game. And we've got a lot of great conversations going on on our forums, which is uh, forums.playyour.com. So we'd love to have you there. Share your ideas, any questions you might have on this. And uh, yeah, that's it. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. And uh, we'll see you next week. Hey, buddy. <laughs>